Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about castanets. Castanets are used in orchestra playing, wind ensemble playing, uh, Broadway shows, even drum set playing. Okay, you can actually play the drum set with these. So, cast these are um, paddle castanets. They're on a stick. Normally, castanets are played by the hand, like that. They're separate, okay, like this. All right, now I'm not very good at that, so we're not going to demonstrate that, but I suggest you go on YouTube and check that out. I did take a couple lessons many, many years ago and uh, with a flamenco dancer, and it's super difficult to play hand castanets. But luckily, we have these apparatus here to help us out. Okay, if any of you want to learn that, plan on spending at least a year trying to get pretty good at it. Um, but these are always going to be your first choice for volume and, you know, orchestra playing and things like that. So let's talk about different castanets and what they're made of. These uh, that you heard first when I did that little demo for you, these are made of ebony. These are Frank Epstein castanets. When you get them, they're really stiff. So in other words, uh, this elastic here is very tight. So what you have to do, you can open it up like this. Be very, very careful. Or you'll break the top of the castanet or the band. So very gently, just do that over and over again. The other way to loosen them up is just play them a lot. They need to be loose so you can play like the rolls that I was doing here. All right, so when you first get a set of castanets and they're pretty tight, don't worry, they will loosen up. But you can help that along by just opening them up gently, okay? Now, these are some really old Epstein castanets. I've had these, God only knows how long I've had these, um, probably since I was in college. So I'm not going to tell you how long that is. <laughs> so these are made of rosewood, and uh, you see here I have a right and a left on them. And normally... There'll be a high cast net and a low cast net. I would definitely suggest you do that. That's how they're made. You can mix and match always, but a little pitch difference is good. It gives you a lot of character. I normally play the high one in my right hand. You don't have to do that. Most players do, though, but not all. So that's um, something you can decide on. So the rosewood cast nets sound like this. where the ebony sound like this. They both sound great. Uh, it's just a different character of sound. The, the rosewood are a little softer and a little more, I don't know, mellow, I would say, where the ebony just cut right through. All right, they're, they're drier sounding. Here's the rosewood. Also, the rosewood tends to be a little bit lower in pitch because ebony is a harder wood, so it's a little higher. This apparatus here is a castanet machine. Now, several companies make these. Uh, you can make your own, like I did here. Um, you need a set of castanets. They're hard to make, okay? So I would definitely suggest buying the castanets themselves. You can get them from several companies once again. And then you can just string them up. Uh, I put some springs on here, and then this little attachment and some string, which you have to replace. And and you can even play that machine with other castanets. So it sounds like just two or three people playing. Now in an orchestra, castanets are used for lots of different kinds of music. They're used for contemporary music, they're used for some of the um, classics in the repertoire by Ravel or Rimsky-Korsakoff or Bizet. So you'll run into this a lot if you ever do the opera Carmen. Uh, actually, Carmen, the main character in that opera, plays castanets on stage. But sometimes that particular artist will not know how to play castanets, who's playing Carmen. So you have to play it in the pit and mimic that. So if you listen to those... Um, you know, if you listen to that opera, you will hear castanets, and, and, and the parts are not easy. So it's very important that, that you can play well. Also, other pieces you might want to listen to, anything by Ravel, um, La Valse is a good one. Uh, Rimsky-Korsakoff, you can listen to Capriccio Espanol, 
has a big castanet part in the last movement. So if you're serious about becoming an orchestral percussionist, you need to have a set of castanets and work on that repertoire. And when you do an audition, you're probably going to have to play one of those pieces for the committee so we can figure out if you can be in the orchestra. All right. So also here I have this little thing that I made, which is a one-man castanet machine. So if I have to play castanets with one hand, most notably a roll, and do something else, else with my other hand, that, this makes it easy. So. All right, so I made this because I had a piece, a contemporary piece that I had to play castanets and play something else, else with my other hand. Not sure what the composer was thinking, but that happens a lot in percussion writing. So I just made this here and I made the middle pieces. I bought the castanets once again and I made my middle rod here on a lathe and then just put them on here and we're done. Okay, so that's something again you can do if you're handy with tools. You can make this. I don't know if anyone, any company makes this thing, uh, anything like it. Maybe. I've never seen another one, but these are things you can do. It doesn't have to be this nice. I just got into it, but uh, you can make, do anything, but it works. The most important thing is you have a middle piece that's a little bit hollow. I don't know if you can see that. That creates a chamber for the castanet to, to play, just like if you play on your knee. Now, I do normally play castanets on my knee. You can play them on a table, all right, or even a piece of foam rubber if you have to, but your knee is the perfect surface, uh, especially if you're, um, I say knee, I really mean thigh, okay? If you have fat thighs like me, they'll sound good. You don't want to play on your knee. I mean, it's louder, but it hurts. So I guess if you have to play really loud, you can do that, all right? But after a while, it takes its toll. So uh, the thigh is fine. And as a uh, footrest, you can use uh, anything, really. I'm using a kunga stand. Uh, you can use a chair, it's fine. Um, you can make something, uh, a little stool that you carry around. It's also good for tambourine playing when you have to play on your knee. So that's something to think about. All right, now I just wanted to show you uh, a set of inferior castanets so you know what not to buy, as I usually do in these videos. So this particular pair, uh, I've had this a long time. I do not remember where I got them. I did not build this one, and it has no name on it, but they sound bad. And I would chalk that up to, uh, to the wood that's used. Um, on, on there. I don't know what it is, but it's not rosewood. It might be Paduke, and it's definitely not ebony. It's too light. So it looks like almost some sort of teak, maybe, maybe, maybe teak, maybe a bad rosewood or Paduke, light Paduke. But that's how I got the idea for this. It's exactly the same, see? So it did serve that purpose. But you hear the difference. All right, so that's not desirable. Always get good instruments because you would never hear this if you were playing with an orchestra and it would sound bad. All right, now let's talk a little about how to play notes and rolls. So typically we hold the castanets like match grip, just like that. Don't go playing them traditional, all right? So match grip and you want them to be perfectly uh, perpendicular to the floor so they're not on their sides and You do use your fingers a lot, just like drumming, if you play if you play right. Okay? So that's extremely important for playing castanets. You don't want to do this. Uh, when I always teach like percussion, well, when I used to teach a lot of percussion tech, like percussion beginners, for the um, you know, the future music teachers, at the college, when you first heard them play castanets, they'd play like this because they hadn't learned to use their fingers yet. 
and that's why we you know we try to start with snare drums so they can get that this is one of those cases where that's a really uh, imperative technique to master to play castanets well so to play softly what you're going to do is you're going to try to close the distance or the gap between the two castanets like this there is always the danger of having them bounce up the bottom one bounce up so that takes a lot of practice playing soft castanets is dangerous but a lot of times conductors will you know they'll give you the hand or whatever so i would suggest reaching for a different set of castanets before you try to do you know these kind of soft techniques but you need to know the soft techniques but first i would do this and see if that makes the conductor happy if it doesn't then I would start employing these techniques. So what you do, you press it, you close the gap, and try to play it without it bouncing. So it's dangerous. You saw I left, I missed a note there, that the notes disappear. Or you can start to get a little bit of an up swing. So that's something, that's the hardest thing to do on cassettes. That's something you want to practice a lot. All right. Now, all kinds of rhythms uh, are important for playing, especially triplets. So you want to do those leading right and then leading left. Because just like snare drum, you don't want to get stuck in a bad sticking. All right. So those are the kinds of triplets. Now, also, you can use a lot of grace notes when you play castanets, especially flams, all right? They call those golpes, which are little um, embellishments. Caratilla is another one. See, that's a short one, and that's a long one. We'll go over that in a minute, <laughs> a little more. But you want to uh, try to simulate that on the paddle cast set. So you do that by just playing a flam. And those little roughs or golpes need to be really crushed. Rarely will you just do this because it has no personality. You always want to beef it up with some sort of um, grace note. So if we were going to just play quarter notes, so those are flams, and then here's our roughs. That's in the character of the flamenco way of playing castanets, which is normally how it's employed, you know, Spanish music, all right? Now, to play rolls, this is uh, much more difficult. What you have to do is our soft technique, which we already learned, but you have to now try to get that upswing, all right? So, so there's our soft thing, and you fish around, you close it up enough so you can get a double. There it is, okay? So you might have to fish around depending on the elasticity of your castanets at that time. That's why it's good for them to be loose. The left hand is even more difficult. All right, and then together. Now, sometimes it helps to move a little bit angle down. So in other words, the tip of the castanet is more on your thigh than the body. Might sound strange, but.
all right? It's, it's a tricky um, technique, but you can get it. You just have to work on that, that double. Now, let me show you how to work on that. So I have a book that I've been working on for several years um, that talks about triangle, tambourine, castanets, crash cymbals, piatti, and suspended cymbals. So the techniques for playing those. And I've been giving these handouts to my students for years and years. <clears throat> I'll post some of these now um, on here, and I'll show you how we can work on this. So the first exercise you see there, <clears throat> number one, excuse me, is just basically eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So very, very simple, doing this. So you want to start doing that. You can play with paddle and machine castanets. So in other words, with your hands would be or flams. Okay, so that's much easier. But when you play fast, it gets a little more difficult. Only fingers, all right? Then number two would sound like this. Now you'll see sometimes I'm playing flams on those notes where I have time to. That's totally acceptable whenever you see that. Even if it's not written in the music, you can do that because that's the character of the instrument. The next one, number three, has two lines. So it sounds like this. And then you can reverse the sticking if you want, all right? Now, the number four sounds like this. One, two, three. And then adding the flam sounds like this. Okay? So, now comes the fun part. If we use our roll technique, and we do doubles on all of those 30 seconds, it sounds like this. And then number three, if I did the same thing, do our double strokes on all the 16th, it sounds like this. So hopefully I'm being clear with all these rhythms, but the point is that you could take any 16th and diddle it like this and get a roll. And that's how you want to practice your rolls. Let's talk about the machine castanets here. So when I do those golpes here, what I'm doing is I'm doing all my fingers in a So that's called a cartilla. I think that's the way you say it. So it's like a long kind of four stroke rough. So one, two, three, four. And you're just dropping your fingers. And you can end that with a little like that. So. All right, that's a really cool technique to use when you're playing machine castanets. So I'll play a little more for you and uh, then we'll call it a day. Thanks.